Robots could take over the world by 2030 when AI becomes self-aware. Ladies and gentlemen, Rex League Project, how the heck are you? I just read an article at NPR.org, and it's titled, Automation Could Displace 800 Million Workers by 2030, Study Finds. Now, Skynet is real. Terminator is more nonfiction than fiction in a future world order where they love us so much. Now, this podcast is brought to you by GetTheTea.com for the ultimate in organic supplementation. I take this stuff called Colostrum and GI Joy, and wow, love it. If anything is going to keep me safe from giant Terminators, I think Colostrum might do the trick. Okay, anyway, so are we the Cylons? This is where it gets deep. Seriously, think about it. Are we the Cylons? Have you seen Battlestar Galactica? Could we be the Cylons? Now, I ask this for a multitude of reasons. Ancient Sumerian creation stories talk about how we were created to do the hard work and the toil of the gods. There's various creation stories that have been discovered from around the world that have a similar underlying theme. So, they could be ancient National Geographics or National Enquirers. And they could also link to the very real possibility that we were created... Not the divine spark of the divine source, but our physical bodies that we're in was a creation of somebody else to do the work for them. And so whether you want to say it's the Elohim, the Anunnaki, Chewbacca, Gandalf the Grayer, I don't know. Okay. Wasn't very funny. I get it. But how many times has our body or our ancestors' bodies been manipulated from the DNA level? How many resets have there been? How many times have we been here before and a global cataclysm, something dire of mass proportions caused a virtual reset in humanity? Now, I'm going to go deep down the rabbit hole. I'm going to ask a bunch of questions. I'm going to get right to the point here in just a second. But is our soul... Essentially, the spirit, a fragment of the creator. A fragment of the creator, of the creation. The essential point of conception. The spark glowing with magnified light. Where does our soul go after this physical existence? Have you ever thought about that? If the human race becomes obsolete, then what happens to our souls? Some people believe in reincarnation. Some people believe in higher planes. But many cultures around the world, especially the ancient Vedic stuff, if you research the Baba Kakra, it discusses these different cycles and these different destinies and these different levels. The human realm, the God realm, the Diva realm. The demigod realm is linked also to the demon realm. You choose which side. It's a very... There's a lot of emotions that go on with these gods, according to these ancient texts, and they have a lot of power. Some people might refer to them as interstellar, interdimensional beings, aliens, extraterrestrials. I don't know. Are they one and the same or are they different? Or are, is it all of the above? Are there, I think that there's both extraterrestrials. I think there's people just like us on other planets around this in the solar system, in the universe. The universe is pretty big to think that we're the only ones here in this entire universe. Now, many of these interactions, though, that people have had, could it be us in the future? Could it be, you know, coming back to try and fix a problem? Is there some, are there, is there wormhole technologies? Is time travel possible? Or are these entities literally interdimensional where they can come in and out of form? So where am I going with this? If the human race becomes obsolete, literally think about it, where, where do our souls go? And what happens to the souls that need to be reincarnated for whatever purpose? What about reincarnation? Will we be reformed on another planet? in another plane, another dimension, another time, another existence? Will we live endlessly in space with a different vibrational frequency? Could we be reincarnated into another type of medium? Now, this is where I want to go with this 2030 timeline because I've had experts on the show that have independent research and equipment that say within the next 7 to 10 years, there could literally be a virtual... Uh, you would have to grow inside. Crops. Crops won't grow outside because the ozone will virtually be destroyed, certain areas that allow certain parts of the sun 
and different radiation levels to come in, the crops just won't grow. And it's going at an unprecedented pace. You can read about the information, stratospheric aerosol injections documents. Even Rhode Island has a bill that says 76% of different parts of the ozone have been destroyed by them trying to block parts of the sun to cool the earth. They're attempting to cool the earth. For whatever reason, the temperatures are raising, whether you want to believe it's because of the amount of cars and industry, or you want to think it's the nemesis or a planet X, or if you want to believe it's the inner core, whatever you want to believe, maybe it's all of the above. I'd say there's a little bit of, you know, I mean, obviously human interaction is going to have a little bit to do with it, but when you see other planets in the solar system, their temperatures rising as well, then I don't think that's linked to our planet. So I think there's a lot more variables to the story. So they're blocking the sun, they're spraying these aerosol injections, these mm, aluminum oxides, etc., to keep the earth as cool as possible. You read about these ancient stories that talk about how the Anunnaki did similar things to their planet when it was dying, but they were using gold instead of aluminum. What if that was this planet 10,000, 20,000 years ago? I've shared with you information about a highly advanced civilization 20,000 years ago, tall, blonde hair, blue eye, Nordic type people that had science that surpassed what we have today. And if you don't think that's true, well, look at Machu Picchu, Puma Punka, look at various structures around the world the evidence is right there. Architects today can't do that kind of stuff with the size and the weight of these stones and these blocks and how accurately they were cut. And then you'll say, oh, they were aliens. Were they? Or was it us? Or was it both? I mean, maybe if you have an advanced race that can travel space, maybe they met some other people from other planets and it's like, you know, Star Trek style. Or maybe that's just a big conspiracy too. Yet you look at the evidence and you can come up with a, a multitude of conclusions, but one thing is for certain, there were highly advanced civilizations 20,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago. The evidence is overwhelming. The question is, who, who built it? Was it us? Was it our ancestors? So let's say that the Earth is at a point now where it might be completely destroyed. And the powers that be know that. The powers that be want to save themselves and their future generations and maybe the human race in, in an interesting sense. And the way that they feel they need to do it is with a artificial intelligence, a non-biological entity, uh, you know, systems becoming self-aware, Skynet kind of stuff, networks that they can then live forever in a virtual network. Now, let's look at some of the information that I compiled here. What do you think about being reincarnated into a different medium? Think it's possible? Think it could be reincarnated into a robotic system, into the internet? Could, do you think that that's a possibility? Could your spark get plugged into that? Your divine source of divine creation, and thank you for that. Do you ever just want to? Do you ever just give thanks for being here? Thanks for your creation. Thanks for your soul. So, what about cloning? Like, if if you were cloned, could your soul reattach to that clone? Is that why the ancient Egyptians, especially the ones that were very powerful? and influential, the aristocratics, you know, the pharaohs, etc., the mummies that you have seen. They just recently did some, did some uh, research. They used a Haldron Collider type setup to check this mummy and see what was inside of its wrappings without hurting it. So I thought that was pretty cool. But do you think it's possible to reincarnate back to your DNA? Do you think that your ancestors might reincarnate with your children or your family members. You ever thought about that? Ever wondered if you're a reincarnation of an ancestor of yours? You ever look at pictures of your ancestors and say, wow, I look just like that person and they're no longer with us. Could we be the reincarnation of our ancestors? And so the DNA is linked to that. And that's why oftentimes these DNA bloodlines that seem to control the world and as far as financially, and you can go back thousands of years and you can get the same, you can follow the same bloodline, the same DNA. In the positions. So who's controlling it above that? Is it still the Elohim? Are they the Anunnaki? Are they still controlling things? Are they one and of the same? And did they create something like this before that became so powerful that it thought it was God and then it started telling people what to do and interacting with people and then influencing people and showing these God-like abilities and then people wrote about it saying that's God. I don't know. So let's, let's look at some, some scary possibilities here over the next 7 to 10 years, linking to this 2030 timeline, the singularity timeline. The singularity timeline 
to sum it up quick, does it not link up to many of these catastrophes that are going on now, creating a non-biological intelligence that's so powerful it can fix anything before everything gets destroyed? And then it just advances so fast, every second is advancing uh, as much as a civilization that maybe lived for, uh, you know, was around for billions of years or since the beginning or the first six billion years of this cycle, this existence, and then this thing every second is, is learning more than a seven billion year time span. Imagine how quick that's going to grow and then it'll just, where will it go? What will it do? When will it stop? I mean, will it just, I mean, it's fascinating to think about. 200 years from now, where, we're all, where will our technologies be? And it's windy outside. Ozone depletion. We've got about seven years left, according to independent researchers, saying crops won't grow outside naturally. Nuclear reactors worldwide, many are leaking with short lifespans and long half-lives, radiation that can cause damage to biology for millions of years. What about the bit of coin and crypt electronic currency forecasts? There's over 1,200 of these things now. They're going crazy. 5G, 4G, 6G, 7G, 69G. Haha, -ha. global smart dust, micro tracking, sensor networks, billions of transmitters spread across the planet to network live real time monitoring, possibly trillions now. Nodes in space connected with these crypt electronic currencies, bit of coins. Nodes in space, quantum computers, quantum internet, virtual reality, AI, AI becomes self-aware, robots gain citizenship, transformation of human beliefs into acceptance of robotic domination. Humans now become the inferior ones that should be punished because of their creation. Much of this is portrayed via media, subliminal programming. And you go back to these ancient texts and the connections are, the synchronicities are fascinating. Biohacking. Look into biohacking. People are getting into biohacking now. Population growing at unprecedented pace. Hundreds of species going extinct daily. Ice sheets melting. Volcanoes erupting. There's 91 volcanoes recently discovered in Antarctica. Those things are, the ice sheets there are melting at an unprecedented pace. The sea levels will rise if all those ice sheets melt, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the singularity. Welcome to the new, new world order where they love you so much. Once again, I ask you, are we the Cylons? And what about the new generation of AI that becomes NBE, non-biological existence? Be the change you want to see.